Welcome to our reflections for this week. I hope and pray that you know that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God which we can know because of Jesus. This week we are remembering that Jesus is worth knowing and following because he always forgives us. Hopefully throughout your lives you have felt the power of forgiveness, both in the sense of forgiving people who have hurt us and in the sense of being forgiven when we have made mistakes. There are many people in the world who have modelled forgiveness. Martin Luther King Jr who believed in peaceful protest, continued to speak about the importance of forgiveness despite being arrested 20 times. He said we must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. And Corrie ten Boom who spoke throughout the world about the importance of forgiveness, despite all that she suffered in a concentration camp in Germany during World War II, including watching her own sister die. She said, forgiveness is an act of the will, and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. So as we remember the importance of forgiveness, we are going to hear our reading for this week, which is from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, and has been read by Alistair Hanney. Mark 2, verses 1 to 12. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and, after digging through it, Lord, the mat the paralysed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there, thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone and they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. Amen. At the heart of our faith, we find forgiveness. Jesus always demonstrated amazing, life-changing forgiveness to everyone who was in need of it. Forgiveness was one of the main strands of Jesus' ministry. Therefore, as we continue to follow Jesus and get to know him more, we are constantly humbled by God's forgiveness of our sins. We recognise that we do not live perfect lives and therefore we need forgiveness, firstly from God, but also, if possible, from anyone that we hurt. The good thing about asking God to forgive us is that he will always say yes. He does so because Jesus has paid the price of our sin, which is the good news of the cross. Therefore, because God 
has forgiven us, so we also need to forgive those who hurt us. Every time we say the Lord's Prayer, we are reminded of the importance of forgiving the people who have hurt us in any way, as we also appreciate God's forgiveness of us. There is great power in forgiveness. It is a power to radically change lives. We see that in the ministry of Jesus, and time after time, I'm sure that we have experienced it in our own lives. When people are willing to put the hearts caused by other people to one side and move on in the power of forgiveness, then life always improves for everyone concerned. Conversely, if people hold on to personal injuries and fail to forgive the people who caused them pain, then walls of division will grow between them. As we have just read, when Jesus met the man who was paralysed and in need of healing, he knew that the man first needed to be forgiven. The man was brought to Jesus by his friends and was lowered through a hole in the roof of the house so that he landed right in front of Jesus. The man expected Jesus to heal him. The man's friends expected Jesus to heal him. Even the crowd who had squeezed into this house expected Jesus to heal this gate crasher. However, the first words that Jesus said to the man were, Son, your sins are forgiven. I think we can be sure that this was not the expected response. And yet Jesus had perceived this was the real need of the man. Whatever were the physical issues that were evident to everyone else, Jesus knew that the man first needed forgiveness. Therefore, Jesus starts with an internal healing before fulfilling the expectations and healing the man physically and sending him home. Receiving forgiveness can often be a life-changing event. In fact, unforgiveness can often cause people to live lives which are, in a sense, paralysed. Not in a physical sense, but in many ways their life ends up restricted. Sometimes the people find themselves in a destructive spiral, fueled by hate, mistrust or guilt. However, forgiveness allows us to break down the barriers that imprison us. Whether it is forgiving those who have hurt us or experiencing forgiveness from other people. Both are releasing acts. Both provide healing in many ways. It is so sad when people claim that they can never forgive someone. It is sad because unforgiveness always hurts the person who refuses to forgive. Jesus is quite clear in Matthew 6. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. These are challenging words. However, forgiveness is often challenging. That said, God knows the challenge that forgiving one another can be, and he is always ready to help us. Corrie ten Boom once met the guard from her concentration camp who had become a Christian. At first she refused to forgive him, but eventually she forgave him through the strength and forgiveness that God gave her. In fact, she said, forgiveness is the key that unlocks the door of resentment and the handcuffs of hatred. It is a power that breaks the chains of bitterness and the shackles of selfishness. Every day someone will experience the healing power of forgiveness. It can be a shocking message for us to hear. And when we feel injured by the words and actions of other people, it can be hard to enact. But through accepting that it is God's will that we should forgive one another, we will gain the peace that we all long for. Therefore, let us live lives of forgiveness as we forgive 
those who hurt us and as we enjoy God's forgiveness for all our sins, then and only then will we know the love and peace of God, which is his free gift to us. Shall we pray? Loving Father, we thank you that through Jesus we can know true forgiveness for all our sins, for the wrong that we have done, for the hurt that our words have caused, for the thoughts that were impure, for the attitudes that were selfish, and for the times when we have failed to act or speak. We thank you for your forgiveness and we appreciate your love and peace. Father, as we remember all our dealings with different people throughout our lives, we ask that you would bring to mind those who we have not got on with, those who we have been misunderstood by, or those who we have disagreed with. Help us in our minds to let go of any past hurts. Help us to forgive these individuals and find peace between us and them. Also, we admit that sometimes we have hurt one another by mistake or without thinking. Therefore, help us to seek their forgiveness, if that is possible, and find peace. We thank you for your forgiveness and we appreciate your love and peace. Loving Jesus, we also bring to you our prayers for the people that we know and care for. Please be with those who are ill, those who find each day a struggle, those who need your healing, and those who need your strength each day. Be with those who feel isolated and have no one to turn to. Help them to know your love and care. And be with those who miss loved ones and feel that each day is harder without them. Give them your peace and comfort now and always. Jesus, Saviour of the world, please be with the situations of concern in the various countries. Help the hungry to receive the provision of food. Help the thirsty to obtain water of life. Help those facing violence and hate to discover peace and love. And help those who face uncertainty to gain the wisdom that they need. Jesus, our Lord, as we continue to follow you, open our eyes to see how we can serve you more faithfully and love you more dearly. Guide us in all that we do and help us to be aware of the ways that we can help the people around us who are in need of assistance. Keep us close and those whom we remember at this time as we continue to forgive one another and enjoy your love and peace. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you to everyone who sent in images or videos of roofs for this week's community space. We are looking at the theme of roofs because we have been thinking about the people who took apart a roof in order to lower their friend to Jesus. There will be no community space for the next couple of weeks, but reflections will continue as normal thanks to involvement from other people. So as we continue to think about the wonder of God's forgiveness, let us sing the worship song, O Come to the Altar. This may well be a new song to you. However, if you don't know it, please listen to the words and allow them to speak to you. Have you come to the end of 
treasure you found So as we continue to remember and appreciate God's forgiveness for us, let us always forgive those who hurt us in any way. And until we meet again, take care, stay safe, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.